Okay, guys, welcome uh, to the Gloves Community Centre. Uh, I'm here, Karen, returning back from Washington. Um, we as a team are obviously very disappointed with the outcome of the results and uh, our emotions which were tested on the night by the commissioners and uh, various people that was there. However, Amir is here to give his own opinion and feelings and uh, we'll talk about the fight and we'll go into questions afterwards. Hi guys, um, thanks for coming. Um, you know, it, was a, it was a tough fight. I'm not taking nothing away from Lamont Peterson. He put on a great performance. He was, you, know, you could see that he trained hard for the fight and he, he, did, he did everything that he, had, he needed to do. He stuck to his game plan, coming strong. Um, you know, at the fight, at the time in the fight, you know, he got a little bit messy and, you know, the pressure, the way he was coming in with his head and everything. And I didn't make a complaint a few times to the referee, but the referee just never really, um, you know, did anything about it. Um, I remember when he hit me below the bell once and I looked at the referee and he still kept coming at me and the referee just didn't say anything. Um, you know, I was fighting in, I was fighting him in his home state and I knew it was going to be a lot more harder for me to win the fight because... You know he's gonna have his home home fans there. He's gonna be, he's the he's the main guy down there in his state, and people have come to see him, and you know he's gonna have that advantage over me. So um, you know we had to be a lot on game. You know we had to try that bit harder. I I was speak to Bernard Hopkins and Oscar De La Hoya before the fight, and they said to me, <clears throat> before you even go into the fight, you know you're two points down anyway because you're fighting him in his home state. Um, and you know, I didn't, it didn't really get to me because I thought to myself, you know, my boxing skills will win this fight if I stick to them and I do everything right, which I did. You know, I tried. Like I said, he, he was just. He, I'm not taking anything away from Peterson. It was a tough fight. And I thought I won the fight. I mean, I, you know, there was two points taken off me. It's the first time ever I've had two points taken off me. Um, never before I've had um, any. I've had warnings in fights, but I've never been deducted points. That's the first time ever I've had two points d deducted in one fight, uh, let alone just one point deducted. So, you know, it, it was a learning curve for me how to come come back from that. And it's only going to make me a better fighter. You know, I've, it was good 12 rounds of fighting. Probably one of the best fights of the year again. On the second time on the trot, I think I can get the best fight of the year. And um, it was just one of the fights that was, everyone was on the edge of the seats. It was non-stop action. Lamont Peterson fought out of his skin. And, you know, I gave it all. And I think um, now we're trying for the rematch. We put a complaint in for the uh, against um, the, the the referee for all the um, taking all the points off me and stuff. So we'll see where that goes. We should find out in the next seven to ten days. Um, but other than that, you know, I was happy with the way I fought. I didn't make mistakes. It's about learning. You know, just turned 25. I, I made mistakes in the fight that I'm not going to make again. I'm going to sit down with my team when I go back in camp again and work on the mistakes that we made. And um, you know, improve improve on the mistakes. I'm still learning as as I'm as I'm going on. And I did say that I'm going to move up to 147 after this fight, but now that's kept me at this weight for another one more fight. So hopefully we're trying to get the rematch. We want the rematch against Lamont Peterson just to settle the score. This time, someone neutral, <coughs> someone maybe um, Vegas. You know, I don't think he'll come to the UK. And Vegas could be a good spot to get this fight next. And um, I'm happy to fight him early next year, either March or May. So I've left it to Golden Boy, my promotion team, to get that fight for me. So we'll just see how that goes. I know what we need to do next time and not to make it any, close, any closer next time. I need to win this fight convincingly. And I think if I stick to my boxing skills and stick to my game plan, we'll definitely win the next fight against them and bring the title back home. But overall, you know, it was a, it was a tough fight and it was just one of them things. I mean, you have good days, you have bad days. And, um, you know, in my opinion, I was up against two people in the ring on Saturday. I was up against the referee and Lamont Peterson. Lamont did what he had to do. He was on game. He was smart. He stuck to his game plan. But I just felt that bit short. I really thought I won the fight, uh, but just didn't get it. OK, you've heard from Amir um, how he felt. So I'm going to open it up to the floor to ask questions. and. Um, you know, we'll give you our answers as best as we can. Specifically, what do you think you did wrong? Can you say you learned? I think <clears throat> at times, um, um, you know, when he come in, uh, I should have probably stood there and just 
sat on my shots a little bit more instead of moving away or hitting angles. Um, you know, I was, when I was in the ring, it seemed like I was the fight was at one pace. But when I watched the fight over again, I watched the fight about three times. The fight was it was it was there was a lot of action in the fight. It was, the work rate was very high, um, and we just need to work on you know maybe fighting a lot more inside and also. Um, you know, at times not to look at the referee because um, you know, when I'm a clean fighter. I've never been in trouble for anything, and um, and at, at times when he was doing things that I didn't like, I, I looked at the referee, but then took a shot at the same time. So, and to make sure my eyes always on my opponent. Do you think you're underestimated, Lamont? I never did know. I knew this was going to be a tough fight. You know, Styles make fights, and even though he's drawn against like, the likes of Victor Ortiz and got beat by Bradley. I knew it was still going to be a tough fight because it's how he has that style that, you know, um, I've not really fought many fighters with that box fight style. He's got a very similar style like myself, but he, he likes to go in there and just stay in there and throw them looping shots to the body. So I knew it was going to be tough. I never underestimated him. That's the reason, you know, Freddie Roach had me training with guys who are a lot heavier than me because he knew that Lamont Peterson's style is to push me around and he wants to, you know, get a little bit dirty in there and keep me in that, um, keep me in the corner and work the body and everything. So sparring and we worked very, very hard. Sparring was perfect. Pad session was perfect. Um, you know, but two weeks before the fight, I got a bit of a, um, a bit of a bit of a flu I got two weeks before the fight. I didn't really tell no one. I thought it was just um, maybe the weather change or something. And I, was, I took a couple of days off training as well. So maybe that didn't help, you know, everything just maybe come at once and the pressure and everything. Uh, and the travelling and everything, but you know this, this is all a learning curve. This is uh, I'm not taking nothing away from Lamont Peterson. I give it all, and I just fell short. I really thought I did win it, but I mean the judges uh, two one giving me by three four points, the other two giving me I lost by one point. If I didn't get the points deducted, then maybe I, you know I would I would have definitely won the fight if I didn't get them points deducted. So it's all a learning curve. It's about you know going into fights now and winning them more convincingly and not giving the opposition a chance. I knew that it would, the fight when it, when it was when when the fight was held because the fight was held in DC. I knew it was going to be even harder to beat a guy from his home state. So I had to try that a bit harder as well. So you know <coughs> we learn from our mistakes. It's about just how we come back from it. We know, I know how I come back from the Prescott fight when I lost, and it's about coming back from this fight even stronger. And I think I will. Where would be your ideal venue to, to stage your rematch? I don't think uh, the rematch will be in the UK. I don't think he'll want to come to the UK. But um, anywhere but DC, you know, anywhere but DC, I think uh, will be perfect. Maybe Vegas could be a good spot. Um, Golden Boy trying for the fight in Vegas. Um, and Lamont Peterson did say that he would love a rematch with me straight after the fight and in the press conference. So he said it to the world that he wants to give me a rematch, and I think um, that'll be the next move for both for us both. But you doubt he'd want to come. Over here I don't. Unit. Yeah, I don't think he he'll, he'll do that. No, he'll never do that. He'll never come to the UK and um, defend the title. I think he'll be either Vegas or wherever. Really. I think it has to be on neutral ground. Yeah. If he comes back to the UK, then then he has a uh, opens up a can of worms as well. Yeah. I'd rather have it. I'd rather yeah. have it in the UK. So then, if I do when I do beat him, I don't want him to think, you know, the same thing happened to me. What happened to him? So I want it to be so neutral, so we have neutral judging and we have neutral referees. I mean, I found that after the fight, the referee was from DC itself, and he also, you know, he'd done 41 fights in DC and only four world title fights. A little bit inexperienced, but it was just one of them things which maybe the team should have looked at that before. Why was it in Washington? I couldn't get no fights. Um, it was very hard to get out a fight in the 145 pound division. Ideally, we were looking at Bradley to um, this and Bradley didn't want to take the fight, so we moved on to fight um, Lamont Peterson. We offered him the fight in the UK. He he refused to take that fight, and also he refused to fight in anywhere but DC. So we we agreed with that. And uh, a lot of people were saying that it was a bit of a mistake, we said, and it's a bit of a, a bit stupid for us to go there, being the champion, fighting him in his home state. But you know we needed the fight. And that's the type of character I am. I think it shows what type of fighter I am. You know, I will travel. I will go to people's backyard and fight them. Great. Um, did you try a little bit too hard? Because at the end of the looking at the fight, and I've watched it four times since I've been back in the mm -hmm. bit jet lag. Um, why did you elect to, to trade with this guy when you 
were basically outboxing him soundly, but basically talking about he seemed to get dragged into some kind of big. Yeah, I, th I think um, that's one thing we need to work on when we get back to camp. I mean, Fred is going to give me an earache probably when I get back. Is because at times I did stay in there too long and I tried to fight with him and maybe I fought with my heart too much instead of using my brains. Uh, when I was boxing him, I was you know, taking him apart and giving him a good boxing lesson. But at times I stayed in there maybe that bit longer and I, and I traded with him, which we don't want to do again. It's not my style and I, maybe I did something that I've um, not done before. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to prove to him that, look, even though he's fighting in his home state, I'm still here in front of him and I will give him a fight. He wants to fight me, I'll fight him. If he wants to box me, I'll box him. So maybe I showed too much heart there. But, I mean, next time we fight him, I'm going to stick to what I know best. Because when I spoke to you in London that time, I said basically, are you going to fight me on the inside and are you going to fight me on the outside? And you even told me that basically talking about, if I can pick a guy out from the outside, what's the point going in there? Mm. You know yeah, I mean, you know, we trained him so well and camped him so well. Maybe I just um, probably thought fighting him inside and had so much energy in me, I thought I can take this guy inside and outside. He was a little bit slower than me, so that worked on my side. You know, so I thought I could catch him in between shots. But, um, you know, that's the, maybe that's something that we did, we did wrong. Fred did say stay away from the ropes, but maybe I stayed on the ropes a little bit longer. Even though, you know, he was putting a lot of pressure on me, a lot of the shots out of the body, he didn't win me once. You know? I mean, he did catch, he did throw a lot of body shots, I took a lot on the elbows and stuff, but, you know, it just shows that he was a lot aggressive, but not a lot of the shots were scoring. Um, but maybe the judges seen that a little bit different. Um, if, like I said, if the points deducted didn't happen, then I would have won that fight probably by two points. Clearly. Um, uh, but because of the point, I'll put you four points because they take one off me and give him one. Mm. But um, you know, it's it's a learning curve really, and probably not even giving an excuse to the ref to even think about taking points off. There's still no doubts that you can be top pound. <coughs> Definitely, you know, I'm only 25. I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world for me. I'm 25, and normally fighters um, are in my position at 27, 28, 29. Like the more Petersons, 27 or 28, I think. So, you know, he's probably in his peak now. I've still not hit my peak. I think another year or so I'll be in my peak. And these are the fights I need that are going to take me to where I want to be. And the fights that are going to bring out the best out of me. It's a fight that, um, you know, is, is only going to make me a better fighter. You know, it was tough. It was, and it was great. I enjoyed every minute of it. And I'd love to go back in there and do it again. And uh, that's just the type of fighter I am. Regarding um, the, the incidents on the road, yeah, clearly, in the middle of the ring, the exchanges that you had, you, you come out on top. Yeah. Do you think it was a deliberate strategy um, going into the fight of the man to actually get inside your head? Because at times during the fight, it did seem that you were visibly angry, visibly upset about what was going on in there. Yeah, you know, I, I think I think uh, Lamont's game plan was to um, you know take me at my game plan. I mean take me away from my boxing and probably standing there and trading with me and getting me to trade with him as well. And, uh, you know, at times I did do that. I did make that mistake where I stayed in there that bit longer and I wanted to fight with him. And when he stood there with me, I stood there with him. Well, maybe I should have just hit him and gone under and out. Um, so I think I should, might have showed too much heart there. Uh, he didn't hurt me in the fight at all. Like he, he, he did catch me a lot of times. He didn't hurt me or anything. Um, like I said, he had a good game plan. He, 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 was, he stuck to his game plan all the way. I think when he, he probably knew that he had to change his pl game plan when I was boxing him. Um, and in the middle of the ring, it was my fight. But, so he had to put the pressure on. And at times, you know, he was running at me because he knew that he couldn't, um, he couldn't you know, box me uh, or outbox me. So he had to run at me and you know, cut, me, cut, cut, cut me off and then just put the, everything into every time he had me stood there. But um, you know, these are the things that we, we, we looked at and um, we didn't really pay much attention on that in training camp. We didn't think it was going to be that bad. But um, you know, it's hopefully the next fight that we when we do face him, it's going to be uh, we're not going to make the mistakes and we're going to stick to what I know best, which is middle of the ring, hit the angles, keep the distance, and not stand there with him because we don't have to stand there with him. I mean, we all know I can take a shot. I took his best shot and he didn't hurt me. I'm the one who put him down twice in the first round, which only one was scored, uh, which I was quite surprised. I mean, I think the the first one that we when we, when we put him down. I think it was more of a clear knockdown than the second one when he got a count. So, you know, I think it was more of a... I think the ref was probably a little bit of pressure on the referee as well because him being from DC as well, he didn't really, really want to make any mistakes. But then when there was two knockdowns, you had to score one as a knockdown. I mean, around about round eight or nine, I think it was, you actually rocked him and he looked like he was going to go down. 
Um, going to the second fight, if, if you materialise, do you think that um, there's enough evidence there where you can stop Peterson? Obviously, he's known for being a fairly slow starter, mm. but as the fight goes on, do you feel that there's enough there that you see that you feel you can, not, you can actually stop him? Well, yeah, we never go into a fight thinking, I'm going to knock the guy out or I'm going to go for the knockout. I never do that. But um, I did hurt him in that uh, in the mid round towards the end. And he, 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 he did, his legs did go. So it just shows that, you know, um, what I was doing was working and I should have just stuck to that. Uh, and we all know now that he is hurt, you know, he, he is, it, we are able to hurt him in the later rounds, even though he's a slow starter. So next time, you know, when we do hurt him, we're just going to put the pressure on him and try to take him out. So I think definitely, you know, if we do, if we do everything right and stick to the game plan, and we, we can probably stop him uh, in the later rounds. Um, but I mean, a win's a win. If it goes a full distance and we put a good performance on him, we we outbox him. I'm happy with that. And then that's a um, just a question for the pair of you. With these two different organisations and holding the tap tap together, they all have their own new uh, number one contenders. Is it not a possibility that basically it could just split the title so you can't get the whole thing back again? Because at the end of the day, you're talking about the IEF is going to say, "Well, we got we got Jack," and the um, WBA say, "No, we got Jill." You know what I'm talking about? So. What's what's going to happen? How can how can you? Is it is it a fear that basically tells me we're not going to get the belts back together? Well, Lamont did um, said on, on on TV. I mean on national TV. Well, that, was verbal, that was verbal. That was verbal. Yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, it's um, it's up to the fight. Because for me, it was a it was a, a voluntary fight. I didn't have to take the fight against Lamont. Uh, so it was it was a the IBF, yeah, so <coughs> IBF it was uh, it was mandatory for the IBF, but I did put the WBA. I didn't have to put the WBA title on. That was up to me, but I'm sure he'd want to fight me um, and put both titles on. I don't think his mandatory is due yet. Uh, if it is, I w if, if, it, if he's due mandatory for the WBA, I will be the first mandatory because I'm still the number one for, for uh, in the WBA. So we'll just see how that goes, really. I'm going to leave that to the team and Golden Boy at the moment. I'm going to take a couple of days off and they working on the, in the background to get the fight on. But I'm sure the monster guy who's going to stick to his words and also push for this fight to happen again because it was such a good fight and it was such a probably one of the best fights of the year. Um, you, don't, you don't think that basically the, the titles are going to split? I hope not. I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, it, does, it, it, it depends on the, the complaint that's gone in. IBF may see the complaints differently. WBA may see the complaint differently. So it, it, there's a possibility that it could be split. However, with what Amir did, we put both the belts on the line. We, we anticipated that both the both the uh, the commission uh, the committees will look at it as one complaint going in and keep the belts together and not split it. Uh, our ob object is obviously get the complaint appeal lodged in. Once we've lodged the complaints and appeal in, see what the outcome of that is, and then see where we go. We have ten days to do it in from the day of the fight, so we're halfway through our discussions and you know we are taking calls late at night and Amir is involved in them discussions and we're having we call them our promotion our promotional company having these discussions and, and that would be in by the end of play today. Um, so and it all depends. And you've got good relationships with both organisations? There's nothing wrong with both the federations. They're a great federation. Amir was proud to be an IBF champion. He was proud to be a, a, a WBA champion. There's nothing wrong with the federations here. You know, our complaint is the referee and the manner he judged that fight. And that made the outcome of the fight with Amir losing. And it's big calls he made. There's no rules saying a push is a foul for a point deduction. So we, we, we're taking the complaint very seriously. And we've obviously talked about it as a team with Golden Boy Promotions. And we want to make sure we follow the full procedures in getting to where we need to get to. I mean, you, you only have some questions in the build-up to the fight. But you did talk about Floyd Mayweather. And it leaves it open when you do lose. If you could say you focus too much mm. on Mayweather. No, we focused on this fight. No, no, we focused on Lamont Peterson 100%. We knew this was going to be a tough fight and we, we had all, I mean, I didn't look past this fight. Um, so, no, definitely not. Um, I mean, every fighter has ambitions. You know, you want to face the best fighters in the, in the world and my ambition is to face someone like Floyd Mayweather, you know, and that'll be probably the highest point of my career, to face the best and that's what I want to do. So that's still there for me. You know, I've still got that ambition of facing the best fighter in the world and and wanting to be the best fighter in the world, um, just like Wiki and all of the fighters who, who were faced Floyd Mayweather. He's the guy out there to beat, and that's what we want to do. That's what's driving me to go up there. 
But no, whoever they put in front of me, you know, 100% focus on that, that, that opponent. Regarding um, the comments you made in the uh, post-war interview, in the room with Larry Merchant, um, yeah. you said that um, with uh, what you said about DC, although 90% of the boxing world will probably agree, um, do you think it might affect um, your popularity or anything going into America with comments you made towards DC? No, not at all. I don't think there'll be any fights in DC again. Golden Boy said we don't never we don't want to put a fight on there in DC. Even though you know it's it's a, it's a shame because the look the crowd was amazing. I mean the crowd buzzed off it. How many people turned up? It was a, it was a sellout and everything. And but. I think other boxer, boxers like myself will see what happened and they'll see the other fighters out there will see what happened to me and they'll think forget going to DC because you know it just puts everyone down really if they know decisions are going to happen and it's going to be unfair and the fights are not going to be fair then I don't think people want to go there back there and Golden Boy have said they don't want to put any shows on in DC so it, it, Understanding the point that Amir was told he'd won you know, two minutes before, he's been told he's won, and then, you know, after all that controversy about counting the cards and then saying that he's lost, emotions are high. Emotions are all over. He's just come off a great fight, fantastic fight. Um, so the comments that Amir made, they were absolutely true and right. When he's just been told he's won and then saying he's not won, you know, it's obvious that there'll be no you fights feel in this. That, um, in boxing, there could be uh, a bit, bit more of an effort to ensure that fight staged in hometown of the fighters can be actually treated a little bit bad. Because in recent times we've seen uh, tragic, uh, tragic mm. events which have seen Pacquiao take a decision over Marquez, we've seen Matthew Macken lose. Yeah, uh, lose yeah all, we want, all we want is um, fair fights. I mean, that's what boxing wants because mm. when fights don't happen fairly, you know, it just puts you on a downer and I think it's bad for boxing really. Yeah. And, um, you, know, it, it, you know, people watch that and other champions see that and they think, you know, why should we go there and fight, or why should we defend our world titles against voluntary defence, or why should we fight someone in the home state? I don't think, no, I think when a lot of other fighters see what happened to me, I don't think they'll want to, you know, fight an opponent in his home state, because this is what happens. I mean, all we want is a fair and square fight, you know, have, have, have neutral judges and a neutral referee, um, and, and I think that would be the perfect thing, if you really, yeah. But it's a learning curve for all of us, you know, it's a learning curve for all of us, and I don't think I'll be making... That again, I don't think I'll be wanting to fight someone in his home state again with his home referee and judging. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. British boxers have got to go and challenge and got to go and, and defend, and that's how they're going to bring belts back to the UK because we, you know, they're great boxers. Yeah, and I, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, but you have to go and do it. And there's no difference to champions or challengers. Why has I mean had so much trouble? He's the best. Why should he have to make concessions then? He's the best. He has to give a lot away. He, you know, everybody comes to him. He's a great, exciting fighter. Everybody knows that uh, the way he's risen from being a young, young star at the Olympic Games to being a world champion has been a very fast, fast track progress. Um, he, he's not avoiding any any challenges. He wants to go in uncomfortable zones and, and make the fights happen. And uh, we have to do that. And uh, you know, at the 140, the people that was there, uh, you know, we offered it to the Bradleys, and, and he refused. We wanted to unify the belts. You all know what Amir offered. It's never been heard of of offering 50% of the UK money. So he's coming out of his zone. So he has to come out of his zone. But now we're back to our, uh, uh, we're back to in popularity. Amir's stakes gone up again. The media, the, uh, the HBO, the Sky, everybody loves Amir because he's an exciting fighting popularity. It's gone up again. However, it's a learning curve. All the greatest fighters will, will learn from it. Manny Pacquiao did it. He has three losses under his belt. It doesn't matter if you lose, if you gain in the audiences and you gain in the crowd, crowd and you gain, in, you, 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 you gain in popularity. It doesn't really matter. And that's where we are now. We did it with Prescott. He's the first one that comes back in and gets everybody around the table. He's done it again and he wants to do it again and he'll build on it. He knows what his mistakes are and he knows where he can get to. We believe him. Shah believes in him. Freddie Rhodes, myself, all the team believe in him. So from, from our point of view, sometimes we have to give a lot more to get the right fights that we need. Yeah, we, we, offered, doing it. we, offered, yeah, we offered a lot of fighters the uh, opportunity and we, I even said I put both my titles on the line. Um, and 
you know, when we we offered the fight to Lamont Peterson before, he he didn't take it, and that was a, that was for the WBA and the IBF. That was in this country. That was for just the WBA, sorry. Yeah, that was in this country, and he, and he refused that. And then we offered the fight for a unification fight against Morales. He turned it down. Tim Bradley turned the fight down, and um, you know, then then the other fighters um, like Lucas Matisse and them guys were already fighting each other. So, and I needed a fight in December, so it was quite difficult to get a fight and. You know, that's one of the reasons we went to um, Lamont Peterson's back, backyard, really, really, because we wanted to fight and we wanted to face someone. And, you know, we have to make these moves if you want to keep on fighting and stay active. Any more questions? Um, if if um, <coughs> you become through the Peterson uh, side, uh, you, you, you win the second fight. Um, Speaking about Floyd Mayweather, if the Mayweather fight does not materialise for whatever reason, um, is there anyone else that you've got like in the uh, yeah? Yeah, like there's a lot of fighters out there who are who are huge names, and um, you know you've got like the Shane Mosley's out there. I one four seven. I think that'll be an amazing fight. You've got um, me and Manny Pacquiao will never fight because you know we train together and everything. We have the same trainer, but you've got Victor Ortiz, Bert, or they fighting each other. Yeah. Um, you know, make the winner of that could be a good fight. Because, um, uh, you know, like I said, styles make fights, and I think maybe I really think Berto might take that fight against Victor Ortiz, the second one. So, you know, me and Berto would be amazing. Two clash, you know, two, two styles could make a good clash. So, so you think the Bradley fight is dead in the water now? Um, I don't think he'll ever take that fight. You know, we, we were ready for him twice, we offered him a fight, and he was offered the biggest payday in his whole career, um, and, he, and he refused to take the fight. Uh, even even this time, before Lamont Peterson offered him the fight, putting the two titles on the line, and um, the fight, and and his one, the WBO he holds, and he still refused the fight. So, you know, we can only try, and I think we did get a little bit desperate, you know, looking for opponents, and that's the reason we went to Lamont Peterson, you know, in 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 DC to fight him. I think I know you said it uh, after the fight, but I heard the sounds from Peterson's camp positive about the rematch? Well, the Sheriff has been speaking to, uh, for, from Golden Boy, been speaking to the camp. Um, we, it's still early days yet. We, we have to wait and see uh, what the outcome is. And uh, if he agrees, that's great. I'll commend him for it. Um, he told me straight after that it was a great fight. Let's do it again. And he, he and Peterson himself said it in the press conference that he'll even come to the UK. Saying things is one thing, but doing it is another. And I hope that they, throughout the camp, the Barry Hunter and his team were magnificent and kept to the word. And I hope, as uh, after the fight, they keep to the word as well, because that's, in a way, that's something that they themselves and the public and the media and the boxing world wants that rematch. And I hope they stick to their guns and give it to us.